Today, not only are lenders using the credit score to decide whether to lend to you, they are also doing differential pricing of their loans using the credit score, which means that if you have a better score, you get a better rate of interest. To learn how the credit score is calculated, how your behavior impacts this score, and how you can improve this vital number, watch this interview with Subhanshu Chattopadhyay, Head of Business Development at CRIF Highmark, one of the country's four credit bureaus. The festive season is approaching and a lot of consumers will be going in for loans. Already, in fact, banks are reporting higher credit growth. So I thought this would be a very good time to discuss credit scores and their importance. My first question to you is, why is, has the credit score become so significant today? Or rather, why has the lack of a good credit score become such a handicap in these modern times? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sanjay. Uh, I think uh, the overall uh, openness uh, of us as a country to availing credit to uh, meet our financial needs, that overall openness has increased. Um, and, and because it has increased, more and more of Indian consumers, irrespective of their age groups, but primarily those who are in the economically active age group, they are availing credit in some form to, to meet their needs. Now, availing credit could be you know, in the form of a personal loan, it could be in the form of a credit card, it could be in the form, especially in the festive season, in the form of a consumer durable or a vehicle where you have all of those offers. Or it could be, you know, for a long-term consumption like a home loan. Now, irrespective of what kind of credit someone is taking, um, the lender to whom, as a consumer, we approach for a loan, one of the things that they're going to look at is the credit score. Uh, while, while processing the request to grant a loan or what is called as a loan application. That is why the credit score is so important because it is a part of the credit underwriting process of every lender today, irrespective of whether you are taking a loan for your personal consumption, whether you are taking a loan on behalf of your enterprise, uh, whether you are taking a loan solely by yourself or whether you are taking a loan along with someone as a co-applicant. The, the lenders are going to look at the credit score of all the applicants on the application form and take a decision based on the credit score amongst other things. Does the credit so, score... Yes, sir, please. Go ahead. So... What and why is this so important? Why is it a part of the lender's application? Because a credit score is actually a number. That's the first thing. It is, it is on a scale of 300 to 900 as has been prescribed by the Reserve Bank of India. It is also a reflection of what you have done in the past while availing credit. So, if you have a good credit score, it will give the lender to whom you have applied for a credit more comfort that you have dealt with credit in the past responsibly. And consequently, as a consumer, you will get a better journey, a better onboarding journey amongst other things you may also get a better loan price or a lower interest rate because increasingly lenders have started journeys where they are doing risk-based pricing using the credit score. So that is why having this credit score is, is a very important component today uh, if you are looking to avail credit for your financial needs. Besides loans, are credit scores also finding application elsewhere? Like one hears that abroad employers look at your credit score and things like that. 
is that happening in india as well so uh, in india the way credit scores can be used is 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 laid out in an act of the indian parliament called the credit information companies regulation act in in that act certain categories of lenders uh, sorry certain categories of institutions are allowed to obtain the credit scores from the credit bureau of people who apply to them for a loan for an insurance for that for that kind of uh so the institutional users of the credit score will always be what the act allows as a regulation uh, to be to be used so who uh, can those be besides banks and nbfcs so it could be it could be an entity that is a bank a lending institution regulated by the rbi it could be an insurance company regulated by the IRTI it could be uh, someone who has a broking license with with sebi it could be a telecom company with with a license from tri it, broadly these are the these are the four uh, categories who can who can use the credit score on an institutional basis now borrowers are advised to keep a close eye on their credit score how frequently do you think they should monitor it so let me uh, let me start by uh, actually saying that the reserve bank has made a provision where every borrower can get their free full credit report or the ffcr from each of the credit bureaus once a year so it allows a borrower the ability to access their credit score at no cost once a year from each of the bureaus and there are four credit bureaus in india all of them have the provision on their website to allow anyone who approaches them through their website to get a free full credit report so firstly everyone who has a credit line should make use of this and take their own credit report at least once a year beyond this it is always advisable that as a borrower when we do our financial planning if we see a need to avail credit in the near future in the in the immediate medium term then even if we need to take a paid credit report we should do that now so that we as a borrower there are no surprises when they are actually applying for the credit application and then the application gets declined because of something that's there in the credit report so at what frequency someone should look at a credit report is actually an outcome of the financial planning that uh, that as a borrower i have and i should make sure that i look at my credit report well in advance of the point in time when i anticipate needing to access credit from a lender so if you are going to go for a paid credit credit report and credit score then about how much would one have to pay for say accessing so, it once a month so uh, the act also lays out what what is the ceiling that can be that can be charged for issuing a credit report to a individual consumer or for a company that wants to access their credit report from from a credit bureau uh, so all the bureaus have the prices in line with what has been laid out uh, in the act each of the credit bureaus may have some difference in the pricing and for every borrower that pricing is available on the website of the individual credit bureaus as well 
but there How is much is the ceiling? So uh, that reference is there in the uh, in in the Trade Information Companies Regulation Act. Um, I don't remember the top of the head, but it is it is laid out in the Act, which is a which is a public document, which is a gazetted document. Could you provide a ballpark figure? What kind of amount are we looking at? So, as a as a consumer, from my own experience, if you if you need to access a paid credit report, the uh, you you I don't remember needing to pay more than five hundred rupees. Is that for a year or? No, that is for that is for a single instance. Single. And as I said, the bill. Yes. The individual credit bureaus may have, you know, repeated subscription plans, and the details of that may will be available on their website. That's fine. And what is the definition of a good credit score? So to answer this question, let me explain what is the credit score. Okay. Um, this three-digit number that I spoke about on a scale of 300 to 900, this is actually indicating a probability. It is indicating the probability that as a borrower, I will default or I will become NBA. Right? Now, each of the credit bureaus will have their own algorithms through which they are arriving at the credit score. Those algorithms directionally and principally may look at the same categories of information, but those algorithms will not be, uh, you know, the same across all the four credit bureaus. So the way lenders look at it is to say, what is an acceptable level of risk that as a lender, I am willing to operate at? And what is the credit score of Credit Bureau A that allows me to operate at that risk versus what is the credit score of Credit Bureau B that allows me to operate at that risk. Finally, for the consumer, therefore, the most important thing is that the lenders today are already walking down the path where they are normalizing the credit scores across the four credit bureaus. So as a, as a consumer, I should not be worried if in a particular bureau, my credit report is clean and I have a score of 750 versus in another credit bureau, my credit report is clean and I have a score of 700. Because the lenders are doing that exercise that is saying that 700 on this credit bureau in performance is equal to 750 of this credit bureau. As a consumer, what I should give my energy, my focus on when I pull my credit report is to see is the detail accurate in the credit report? So are all my credit facilities available? Is the repayment history on those credit facilities accurate and updated? Are there some KYCs 
that are reported in my name which actually don't belong to me? Are there some telephone numbers, some addresses that are reported in the credit report that actually don't belong to me? Because all of these are the raw data basis which the credit score is appearing on the credit report. So as a, as a borrower, as a consumer, my focus should not be to say that, okay, I am at 750, but I think 800 is a good credit score. Because 750 or 800 or 700 is an outcome of the accuracy and the completeness of the raw data that is the report. The lenders will take care, irrespective of whatever credit bureau they are using for decisioning, the lenders will take care to say, okay, if you are, as I said, 700 on this credit bureau, it means you are same as 750 on another credit bureau. So that is something new that I have learned today because mostly one is told that 750 is regarded as a good credit score. But you're saying that because of the way credit scores are calculated across bureaus, they can be different. So one should not Absolutely. worry unnecessarily. Now, if one has a very poor credit score, what are some of the steps one can take to improve it? Okay. So, so, Mr. Singh, I think the first thing, if one should, when one sees a poor credit score, is actually to look at the credit report in time. Uh, in time meaning when they have time to look at it in detail, rather than reacting immediately and saying, why is my score so low? Why I say this? As I said, the credit score is an algorithm that is throwing out a three-digit number based on the data that is there in the credit report. So they should see, is the data accurate? So, you know, is a credit card showing up which is issued to me which I have never activated. And that is where a, a lot of uh, missed payments are showing. Because when someone pulls their free, free full credit report or the FFCR or even the paid credit report from a bureau's website, in the credit report, they will not only see that this is a credit card, but they will see this is a credit card issued by this lender on this date, and this is the card number. So as a consumer, I know if it belongs to me or does not belong to me. So if there are inaccuracies, you know, either in terms of a credit line appearing in my credit report, which does not belong to me, or I have actually made a payment, but that is not being reflected, they should raise a dispute with the credit bureau from which they have pulled the report and flag that dispute. Under the same act, the credit bureaus are obligated to take that dispute to the lender on whose credit facility the borrower is uh, raising a dispute and the lenders are obligated to resolve that within a period of 30 days. Now that resolution may happen that the lender will give the credit bureau updated, corrected data. And then updated, corrected data will automatically take care of the credit score because the inaccuracy has gone away. Or the lender will come back and say, no, whatever we have reported is correct. Payment has not come. And the credit bureau will then inform the consumer that we've received a clarification from the lender. This is the clarification. So, in a, so one of the reasons why your credit score can be poor is inaccuracy of reporting. 
And that's why when you see a credit report where your credit score is lower than what you expect, the first thing is to look at the report in detail with a calm mind and see if there are inaccuracies. If there are no inaccuracies and you actually see, yes, I have missed repayments, then in whatever facilities you are using now or you are actively servicing now, make sure that you don't miss repayments. Because then there is a pattern that is being reestablished that you can deal with credit responsibly. And when that pattern shows itself, the score will automatically take care of itself. It may also happen that your credit score is a little lower because you have taken a lot of loans within a short period of time. Now, clearly, that indicates a growth in leverage. Now, if the consumer is again able to demonstrate the ability to repay that increased leverage or fulfill that increased obligation over a period of time, the credit score will auto correct. So if there is a missed repayment, if the credit score is actually low because a repayment has not happened and there are active and actively loans are being serviced now, the advice is that make sure you continue servicing them in time because then that pattern is being established which will auto correct. If the score is low because there's been a growth in leverage, demonstrate in the short term, in the immediate medium term that you can fulfill that increased obligation, the score will auto correct. If it is because of an inaccuracy, make use of the dispute mechanisms available. Reach out to the credit bureaus because then the credit bureau and the lender will get into the act because they're obligated to do so, to resolve that. On the CREF IMARC website, we have a section which addresses frequently asked questions on the credit report. And we also have a section for grievance repressive where the details through which consumers can reach out to Crefine Mark, it is very clearly laid out. Well, in case of a credit card, does the extent to which you use the credit card, say you are allowed to borrow up to 100, use up to say 100 rupees, if you use up to 80 or 90 rupees, does that so affect your credit score? I usage. See, again, as I, as I said, the score is a probabilistic algorithm, right? So let's say Sanjay and Shubranshu are two people whose credit report has been pulled. And both of us are using 90 out of our allowed 100 on the credit card in August 2020. The algorithm is going to say, okay, for Sanjay, is this an outlier behavior? Or is this a pattern? And it's going to ask the same question for Chubranshu. Is this an outlier behavior or is this a pattern? And then it's going to look at, in the credit bureau, all people who have ever used a credit card and have defaulted and say, what is the probability that if someone uses 90% of their card limit as an outlier, they go, they go, they default or they become an NPA. Versus what is the probability that someone who is doing it as a pattern goes default and becomes an NPA. Now, if this is not, if this is not different in terms of probability, then both our scores will be the same. But if I am showing a pattern and you are an outlier and there's a difference in probability, then the scoring algorithm will calculate our scores accordingly. 
Okay. So there are no simple answers. It is very probabilistic. Uh, yes. It is probabilistic, but it's based on a huge, huge volume of data, which is constantly getting updated every month. So that is that is why uh, the accuracy of the probability is, is so high. What is a settled account? And does settling your account with a lender affect your credit score? negatively see so uh, so a settlement will typically happen when a borrower is unable to fulfill their obligation to pay the complete outstanding on the loan in that case the borrower may approach the lender and present their case and the lender may, after a, after due consideration and availing all the mechanisms that are allowed by the Reserve Bank, opt for a settlement. But what a settlement effectively means from the borrower standpoint is that the borrower has been unable, despite the best efforts of the lender, to fulfill the complete obligation of paying the outstanding balance of the loan and has paid a part of it. This will then be reported by the lender to the credit bureau as an account that was settled with the loan. Behaviorally, it's a different risk profile because I have not been able to pay my full amount. And therefore, in the short term, the credit score will acknowledge this differentiated risk and it will have a negative impact. But again, if the borrower on their loans that they are currently servicing or a loan that they take after a while is able to demonstrate their ability to make full payments in time, then over a period of time, the score will autocorrect. Therefore, the advice from you know taking care of your own credit score standpoint to, to a borrower is use a settlement only as a last resort. Is it advisable to go back to that lender with, with, with whom you settled uh, the account and actually make payments in full? Is that advisable? And will that help your credit score? Uh, Mr. Singh, I think, you know, uh, it will be left to the policy mechanisms of the individual lenders to, to see if they facilitate this kind of uh, this kind of you know exactly. reconciliation in, in, in that sense. Now, would you have any words of advice for borrowers in this festive season vis-a-vis -vis borrowing on their credit scores? Any final words of advice? Uh, so, in my view, you know, irrespective of the festive season or not festive season, we need to plan and list out our expenses. Now, In the festive season, there is a greater availability of offers on certain products. But as a borrower, if I, I need to be cognizant that I, that I need to take care of my credit score. So if I'm planning to buy something in the festive season, 
I would take a look at my credit scores, you know, sometime in, in May or June to make sure that it is in order so that I don't get a surprise when the festive season comes. Secondly, unless I absolutely need to, I would distribute my buying needs over multiple festive seasons. Because if I buy some things in the festive season, it will mean that there is an increased obligation to pay. I will create a repayment record on my increased obligations. Again, take care of my credit score and fulfill some of the incremental buying needs in my next festive season. Uh, separation of discretionary versus mandatory buying is very important, especially if the approach to buy is 100% use credit. Uh, that is, that is there. Um, and it is very important for the consumers to study the offers and make an educated decision about which is the offer that I am availing. Uh, because we are generally have a lot of choices in this time window. The choices are attractive, but important to make an uh, educated case, uh, not guess, educated decision on, on which is the offer that I want to avail. Thank you, Mr. Chattopadhyay. This has been a very enlightening conversation and I'm sure our viewers will benefit immensely from it and from your words of wisdom. Uh, and I'm sure they will take loans slightly more wisely after watching this video.